Hello and welcome back. My name is Josh and today we'll be talking about the Ricoh XR2. In 1977, the Ricoh XR1 was released alongside this guy, the XR2. The only difference between them being that the XR1 was a fully manual camera while the XR2 came with an aperture priority auto exposure mode. The XR1 and the XR2 were the first Ricoh SLRs to feature the Pentax K mount lens system. In this bad boy we have a vertical traveling metal focal plane shutter that offers speeds from 1 second to 1 1,000th one of a second as well as bulb mode and flash sync at speeds of up to 1 1 25th of a second. And also on the shutter speed dial you'll see that you've got the green auto exposure mode or you've got a red X which indicates 1 90th of a second where you could shoot fully mechanical. Otherwise you will need two LR or SR44 batteries to fire in manual mode. Next to the shutter speed dial you have a single stroke film advance lever. This uses a special ball bearing and an extra long spring for exceptionally smooth film winding action. When you pick up the camera body you feel the exceptional balance and compactness weighing in at 560 grams without the lens. Next to the advanced lever you've got the shutter release button and it comes with a threaded female end for a shutter release cable to be screwed into. When you want to activate the exposure meter all you have to do is slightly depress the shutter release button. When you push the button down all the way that's how you trigger the shutter release. The XR2's exposure meter is activated by rotating the film advance lever back and away from the body and when you do that you reveal this red dot. Wait where is it? right there. On the return of the lever to its stowed position, not only is the power to the meter shut off, but the shutter release button is now locked. Inside the full information viewfinder, you'll find all of the essentials. You'll see your f-stop, an array of shutter speeds, your exposure needle, and your battery check. Focusing on this camera couldn't be any easier because inside the focusing screen you have three different focusing systems. In the center is a diagonal split image rangefinder spot surrounded by a microprism collar, and then the remainder of the screen is a Fresnel-aided ground glass. This camera comes equipped with a through-the-lens full aperture metering system that uses three CDS photocells. This means you'll have sensitive, precise light measurement for center-weighted average light readings. This camera comes with a wide ASA range from a slow ASA 12 to ASA 3200. So that'll give you a choice of as many film speeds as you'll ever need. And with the XR2, you also get exposure compensation of plus or minus two stops. On this camera, you've also got one of my favorite features, the multiple exposure button. This feature is really easy to use. All you have to do is hold down the multiple exposure button while you advance the film advance lever. And when you do that, all you're doing is resetting the shutter without advancing the film through the camera or advancing the film counter on top of the camera. Like I mentioned before, this camera uses the Pentax K mount, which has been acclaimed for its versatility. And it just means that you have a wide array of choices for compact, interchangeable lenses. On the front of the camera, you've got your self timer of 10 seconds. You've got a depth of field preview and you've got the button for the lens release. And there's a nice little feature on the back of the camera right here. You'll see this eyepiece blind. And that's used to prevent light from entering when doing um, like long exposures, but also to prevent light from entering the viewfinder and obscuring the light meter readings. And on the bottom, we've got our battery cap where, again, I said before, but it uses two LR or SR44 batteries. So let me back up a second because I'm not sure I explained this very clearly. When you open the film advance and you can see the red dot and you slightly depress the shutter release, you'll see the needle inside the viewfinder spring up to the shutter speed that the meter is reading. The nice thing about this metering system is that it works anytime that the advance lever is moved away from its stowed position, so even in the manual modes. So you'll see if you're shooting at a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second that there is a green needle that is highlighting 1 250th of a second. And when you depress the shutter speed, you'll see that the needle will still spring to action. And then essentially it's your job to just select the right f-stop that matches the shutter speed. 
it's a really nice system and if you saw my last camera review of the Minolta XG7 you'll note that in that camera you couldn't read the meter if you were in any of the manual settings but on this camera you can which is definitely a benefit and that's actually going to lead me to finish talking about the basics and talk about the things that I like and the things that I dislike so first let's talk about the things that I like about this camera So first, like I was just mentioning, I love the metering system on here. I think it is so easy to read, easy to use, and I like that you can meter in manual mode. And even when you're in aperture priority mode, it's easy to just set the focus, hit the shutter, and you'll know that you're, you're getting a nice, reliable, well-balanced image. I think one of the best pros of this camera is just the wide array of features that it has. You've got a multiple exposure button, you've got depth of field preview, you've got a self timer, you have the eyepiece blind, which is something that I don't find myself using that often because I don't really do a whole lot of long exposures, but it is something that I, I like that it's there. Again, uh, it's, it's the thought that counts a lot of times with these types of cameras and that's definitely just a smart design choice. I also like that it includes the X feature on the uh, shutter wheel. Uh, which, uh, to remind you, is 1 90th of a second mechanical mode so that you can still shoot this camera mechanically and that's something that could come in handy if your battery ever runs out. I mentioned before that this camera has three different focusing systems and the focusing system is another thing that I love on here. I personally am one to use the rangefinder spot uh, and finding focus with this camera. Uh, it's the same on my Minolta XG7. It's just super easy, super simple, and I'm pretty much always nailing focus with this camera. One other thing that I want to note in the pros section is how you turn the camera on and off, which is just advancing and stowing the film advance lever. I think it's super simple. It's easy to tell if the camera is on or off, and when it is stowed, you know that you're not draining the battery. And that was one thing that I noted in my Minolta video was that it was if you weren't in the habit of turning the camera off, then you could inadvertently drain the battery. With this, you're almost never going to forget to just put the film advance lever back in the stowed position. Another thing that I like about this camera that uh, was one of my dislikes in the Minolta video was that I, I can easily take a meter reading in cold weather if I'm wearing gloves because all you have to do is depress the shutter release button. I also really like that they went with a K mount on this camera uh, it makes it really easy to find lenses for this camera. They're all over the place. My girlfriend's grandmother gave me a Pentax K1000 and I was able to pop the 50 millimeter lens right off of that one and put it onto this camera with no problem. So yeah, definitely a, a plus that there are tons of lenses for this camera. All right, now I wanna talk about the things that I dislike about this camera and there aren't that many. Okay, the first thing I want to note is, at least in my camera, the visibility of the viewfinder is a little low. So when shooting in low light situations, I do kind of struggle to see the shutter speed that I'm shooting at. Um, especially if I want to shoot in manual mode, um, I'd seeing the needle against the, the black shutter speed markings can be a little tricky. Now, there's one thing that I haven't tested myself, but it did mention in the manual for this camera, and I'm just going to read it. It said, if you press the shutter release button without batteries in the camera, the mirror will stay up. Therefore, please do not forget to insert batteries into the camera first. And I, I'm assuming that when they say that, they mean if you are in any mode other than the X mode, which is the manual mode. Um, it's just something that I'll throw in here. It's not necessarily a dislike it, you know, me disliking that this camera needs batteries is whatever. I mean, I, I do prefer when you can use a camera mechanically or electronically, um, but it's not really something I could say that I entirely dislike because I do like the electronic elements of this camera. Now, to go back to one of the things I said I liked, which is the uh, using the film advance to turn the camera on and off, I will say that being someone who wears glasses, um, that sometimes uh, putting the camera up to my face, I will inadvertently press in the film advance lever when I'm trying to take a meter reading or when I'm trying to take a picture. It's also sometimes uh, if you're not in the habit of pulling the, the advance lever back, sometimes I will go to take a photo and realize that I left the advance lever pushed in 
and locked the shutter release button so I, I don't actually end up taking the photo because it's locked. Um, that could be a little frustrating. It's, it's uh, more of a, a minor inconvenience as long as you get into the habit of pulling the advanced lever back uh, before shooting and it doesn't get in your way too much when you hold the camera up to your face, it should be fine. But it is a little bit of a nuisance, but it hasn't really affected me too often. I have a complaint for this camera that I have for a lot of SLRs, and that is that the shutter release is on the shutter release button, the sort of the threaded hole in the top of the shutter release button uh, for a cable to be screwed into. I just never really liked that design. I don't really like that it, it pokes out of the top. It, it always makes me feel weird, that, especially when I'm screwing it in. If I've already advanced the film when I'm screwing it in, I always feel like I'm accidentally going to press uh, the shutter release button down and I'm going to expose the frame before I want to. Um, I much prefer the design on the Minolta XG7 where they had it on the side of the lens mount um, just because you sort of remove that fear. But that's just a gripe that I have with most SLRs. Most SLRs that I've seen have it in the shutter release button, and it's just something that I never really liked, so I'm throwing it in there. And last but not least, I can't say that this is a problem for every Ricoh XR2, but when I did get this camera, uh, I did have a, a, a fair amount of light leaks, and they were kind of a unique light leak. Actually, I'm gonna show you some examples of what it looked like. So I guess my recommendation, and this should go without saying for any SLR, is that you should maybe replace the light seals anytime you order a secondhand XLR that isn't uh, brand new or newly refurbished. I don't think that that's necessarily a problem for the XR2 itself, um, maybe just mine specifically, but I will say that I have, I have received cameras that had pretty awful light seals and they still didn't give me any light leaks. So uh, something about the design of those cameras was just extra preventative of light leaks. This camera maybe just lacks in, in that field. So if you do get this camera, it might be a safe bet to just replace the light seals, um, but you should generally just do that anyway. So my final thoughts on this camera are that it is great. I don't have a lot of complaints about it, as you saw. It really serves most of my needs. I like that I can read the meter when I'm in manual mode. I like that it has this wide array of features that I don't see on a whole lot of other cameras, especially the manual exposure mode. Um, that was something I should have highlighted in the pros section. The manual exposure mode is something that is incredibly useful. I use it all the time uh, to great effect and has never let me down. So. This is definitely a camera that I would recommend for beginners or professionals alike. I think that um, you, because you have all the features, because you have the K mount, so you have this wide array of lenses that you could choose from, this makes it an ideal camera for just about anyone. I wouldn't say it's my favorite camera that I own. We'll probably get to that another time, but uh, this one is is high up on my list, and I'm so glad that I got it. I definitely recommend it for anyone out there. So yeah, that about does it for my review of this camera. I'm going to leave you guys as always with a collection of photos that I've taken on the Ricoh XR2. Until next time, I've been Josh. This is the Ricoh XR2. Have a good one.